Hey, how's it going guys? It's Mega Miles here, or you might recognize me from this season's Master Chef. Um, so today I wanted to go over the business strategy game. Um, I've done several videos in the past about this uh, business simulation and uh, they're all still relevant, but I wanted to do an updated video just so you guys don't, you know, wonder about it because uh, yeah, the, the BSG hasn't changed for several years. Um, the very first video I made was like shortly after I did it myself and that was like the old version. So I wanted to, to reassure you guys, all those other videos, I'll link them in the description are still applicable. Um, but I'm going to reiterate, go through this just in case you're stressed. Don't worry. I'll hold your hand through this. <laughs> um, well, you'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't forget to subscribe guys, it means so much, thanks. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pretty much show you like the overview of how to use this. Um, so obviously you're a shoe company competing against other shoe companies, um, likely your students uh, or your fellow classmates, I mean. Um, so we're gonna go through uh, the decision entries panels and keep in mind that um, I know I've been idle too long. I've been talking, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> um, so uh, pretty much what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna discuss a lot in terms of strategy. And the reason why is there's so many different factors, okay? So like how many teams you're competing against, how difficult the actual economy is, what your current situation is, how many rounds you're going to do. There's a lot of stuff. So like putting in like just numbers or like saying, hey, the strategy will work for you means it won't work for other people. And like it's really conditional. So I hope you guys understand that. Um, and by the way, if you need help, shoot me an email. I'll get back to you. Just put some context in it. Don't don't send me an email and be like, I need help. I'll be like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Um, but yeah, just give me some context. I'll get back to you. Uh, so let's get started. Um, oh yeah, leave a like in this video too. Thank you, I love you. So the first section is a uh, compensation and training. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's pretty much obviously talking about your workforce's compensation and training. Um, so the base wage is the base wage. Incentive pay is like, hey, if you do well, you'll get a little bonus. Fringe benefits, uh, I think that's like vacation. I don't know. When your workers are on the fringe, you pay them certain dollars so they like chill out or something. I don't know. It's important though. Just, I'll explain everything. Best practices, it's like, hey, learn, learn, hone your craft. Um, so this entire section is pretty much to uh, like make your workforce efficient. Um, so the key here is to not underspend and to not overspend. If you want to play it safe, you can just look at the industry average up here and just kind of like base it off of that. Um, but generally, best practices are, are pretty important uh, because it helps your workforce produce better over time. It's like they learn how to do stuff better as the simulation goes on. So supervisory staff, this is like the ratio uh, ratio production workers to supervisors. So 40 to one, you can adjust this obviously however you want. Um, which if you think about it, you've got more management, more eyes on what's going on. So it, it'll help with efficiency, but it won't necessarily result in like a lower overall cost. Does that make sense? Like, so like if you're like such a perfectionist, you're going to be spending a lot of money. You know, so like you've got to balance that. So uh, wage increase similar to the base wage up here. So yeah, this just like boost their wage if you want to. Um, so yeah, it's like that's not necessary. You can just depends on your approach. So bait uh, branded production. Sorry. Um, so this page is pretty important. This you've got North America, Europe, Asia and Latin America. When you first start, you're going to have North American and Asia, so which is fine. And then this is what comprises your products. So you're going to go through here and say, OK, I want to produce, you know, a five 
star quality product. So you adjust these variables. Um, the models aren't necessarily like directly tied into the SQ rating. Um, they, they have a, an impact on it, but this is like excluded from when you're trying to like adjust this. So, uh, sorry if I'm going quick. <laughs> um, so superior materials are, are going to boost your SQ rating. Obviously it's going to cost more and styling, same thing. Okay. So like we could just label these a and B, it doesn't matter what they're called that these two factors, whatever you do, raising them or lowering them impact this. So TQM six Sigma, what that does is it, um, it, it, it's like another, uh, like best practices type thing. So it's a, a quality program. Six Sigma like exists in real life. Uh, pretty much like it's a simulation. So like all this is applicable to real life. Um, except it's not a simulation. Um, so yeah, this is like a program that people have their employees. Like it's like a certification. So pretty much it's like, like, uh, it makes your, your operation more efficient. So it's important, but you've got to balance pretty much everything in this game. You've got to balance. So you can't just be like, Oh, Hey, I'm just going to spend out the wazoo and, uh, yeah, you'll get in trouble pretty quickly. So, um, models, same thing. You got to be progressive with it. Generally, it depends on your approach too. So like if you're wanting to go like super high quality, you might not be able to do 500 models and still make a lot like a good profit margin. Um, so you've got to, you've got to be aware you've got to like pay attention to stuff and down here, branded pairs to be manufactured. So this is where you input how many pairs you want to be, uh, you want to be manufactured. So like from 900 right above it, that line is total production capacity. So it'll be like, okay, we want to max out that production. So there you go. And then you go into the next screen production facilities, which is where you can also purchase additional equipment. So let's say we purchase 250. So back here, this 900, now we can do 1200 instead of the, the 900 max that it was at before. So that's how that works. And you've got new and refurbished. Um, generally what I do, I just balance the two. Um, there's not like, if you're doing all the other parts, right? this isn't going to matter too much. Okay. So this is like, if you have to worry about this stuff, you're, you're, uh, yeah. So, um, production improvements, um, they're important to an extent, but they're not required. So like what I've seen most is like people get themselves in more trouble using these because they don't understand how they work. They're like, oh, production improvement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they're like, oh shit. Cause you can't reverse these. Um, so be careful with them. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, what you can do is look at a uh, capital outlays versus annual cost saving, but just realize that's dynamic. That can change too. So like it depends. So just be careful. That's the best advice I can give you in this section. Um, space for production equipment. When you want to expand, you purchase, purchase additional space there. So, um, branded distribution, important screen. It looks straightforward, but it's not. Um, so this is where you allocate all your production. You see your North American supply, Asia supply, Latin America supply, and then you distribute however you want. It's like a little chart. You know what I mean? So like if we want 500, to go to North America, just throwing out a number. We, we do that. And then down here, it'll say, okay, we're shipping too many pair. So like here, we've got additional pair to ship. So we go 1085 and this is what you want. Zero. You're good. Okay. Provided that you're meeting the demand. You can't just enter random numbers here and expect to sell everything. So, um, this is L Y inventory. So you just want to monitor this. You can use this, uh, depending on what your, your inventory sur inventory surplus is. Sorry. I'm playing some music. It's super loud. I can't even hear my voice. Um, 
So yeah, uh, you just gotta pay attention to your inventory surplus or uh, shortfall. Th this r it's hard to highlight this row down here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then you can you can sell off LY inventory if necessary, but you need to pay attention to if it's a loss or not. Sometimes selling at a loss is okay. You just uh, you just gotta pay. You just you keep an eye on like your your projections down here too. Um, cause it's, there's so many moving parts. I'm trying to like, uh, everything's connected. So like, you got to pay attention to like the overall picture, which is your projections down here, which can be inaccurate. Um, which kind of com comes into this next page, internet marketing with competitive assumptions. Okay. So like in the old BSG, they used to have this huge section of like the projections and it was just like, so kind of irrelevant. Um, but they're, they're okay. So like the, the numbers are kind of like populated them themselves. So don't worry about it too much, but they are important because adjusting these does change your projections, um, in every aspect. So if you want to adjust them, if you think you know what the competition's going to do, go for it, but just be careful. Okay. Um, so internet marketing, uh, you've got your retail price, search engine advertising, and free shipping. So these margins are terrible, right? So like, depending on like how efficiently you're operating, free shipping is a bad idea. You see that it drops our, uh, our profit margin down so much. Um, so the key is, is to do it when it makes more sense so like you'll see you'll know just keep an eye on these you'll see like at a certain point if you're if you're doing the bsg well it'll only drop like a percent or two if that and your your margins will be a lot higher but it also helps with your image rating because your customers like that um so yeah one important thing on the internet marketing or the the price anyway is your retail price has to exceed the wholesale price by 40%. So what that means is when you're selling to retailers, um, your internet marketing price has to be 40% above that. Otherwise the retailers get pissed off. They're like, why am I selling this dude shoe when he's selling it cheaper than me? You know what I mean? So like, I guess it's just like kind of like etiquette, business etiquette. So yeah, you, you should maintain that. Um, so wholesale marketing, big section, more competitive assumptions. Um, most of them are generally automatically populated. Once again, don't worry too much about it unless you're like in a, like a lot of trouble, I guess. Um, by then email me ho hopefully earlier, sooner than later. Um, so wholesale decisions are price, advertising, mail and rebate, delivery time and retailer support. So price is self-explanatory. Um, advertising, very important. You need to, it has diminishing returns. So just like pay attention to it, like the juice that you're getting for the squeeze, you know? Mail-in rebate is important. Um, it's got a, a wide spectrum of adjustments. Just, I wouldn't put it to zero or something. Don't like, yeah. Um, delivery time is important. But you have to do it right. So like, don't go to one week on the, the first de decision. You want you want your operation established and efficient before you start pressing production. Um, retailer support. So this goes into like, I assume like the displays, you know, like what your setup looks like in the store, which drives more retailer outlets over time to you. So more people are going to sell your product which means more demand in the end. So you can progressively increase this. Just don't go too crazy. The next section is private label. Now this section is super important, but you have to implement it correctly. Otherwise it can do you more harm than good. Um, so what private label is, is essentially we're selling our shoes to these other companies that are then going to put their own label on it. So we're producing, generally speaking, lower quality products and we're putting out a bid 
for it to be accepted or rejected and we're also competing against these other companies our competitors like your classmates uh to win those bids so yeah it can it can boost your revenues or like if your bid doesn't get accepted that's you know like potential wasted um so what you do it's materials enhanced styling um you've got your sq see how it's red here it's because the global minimum is 4.2 so we've got to increase that slightly and look we've got a 4.2 woohoo <laughs> um so then north america you've got your your um markets here so you distribute depending on how you have the setup you could you know save some production for each area or each plant respectively depending on where you're at or you could distribute from one plant it depends um generally start distrib distribution from one plant just for efficiency and then i would do like equal amounts um you know so like not not we can't do like totally equal amounts but so whatever we'll just do 250 that works okay so like for example right so from there we go down to private label contract offer and um we put in our our offer so the the key here is to look at your competitive comparative efforts and down here there's an offer price of uh 42 you kind of look at like what the other teams did if everyone bid like 30 dollars you're like damn okay so that's super competitive maybe you don't even want to attempt putting in a bid because there's there's certain times where like you'll have a team who like doesn't understand it and they're like pricing everything at a loss like they're losing money but like you trying to compete against them you're gonna lose money even more so because if you beat their price you're gonna take a bigger loss than they are already were so you've got to pay attention so like you look at your margin over direct costs so let's say like everyone's priced at forty dollars we could put in a bid at thirty five dollars and like we'd still be fine you know what i mean so don't get like too greedy you've uh you just don't want to go over the max bid because then it won't be accepted so that's that's it for that um you can you can put in your like if you're confident that your bid is going to be accepted you check yes so what that does is it puts that into your projections okay so the next page is uh celebrity endorsements and um i miss the days when they didn't cap the celebs at three because like when i had the course I, can, I, I monopolized the celebrity market. I had all the celebs. I went to their parties. We drank and like, you know, I networked with all like seriously. Samuel Jackson is freaking so cool. You guys wouldn't even know. I mean, Judy Judge. She's crazy. She parties like there's no tomorrow. So yeah, but now I can I can only get three at once. OK, so like like it's it kind of sucks. So. <laughs> you can only win three celebrities at one time um but they're they're still important so what you do you put in your contract offer and um just really pay attention to what other teams are doing because you don't want to if you if you increase the bid way too much everyone's going to start bidding higher and then the celebs kind of become obsolete you've kind of ruined their effect because you're spending too much um so bid on your celebs as far as the spending cap goes, I generally don't put one because we can only win three. Um, and I, like, I generally always want to win three if I can without like going crazy on the bid. All right, guys, the next page is corporate citizenship. Um, it's important because it helps with your image rating. The key here is to do everything progressively. You don't want to just sit there and like max everything out or implement everything all at once. So just take your time over the years, increase, you know, energy initiatives or charitable contributions um like you don't have to do this but it's important to to boost your image rating so most likely you should do it <laughs> um so yeah the last screen is finance and cash flow um this screen is also all, all this stuff is important okay i keep saying this screen's important this screen's important so um pretty much what this is is like kind of like where you're standing financially at the end of a decision 
So there's a few things that we can tinker with here. One of the important ones is stock repurchases, but you have to do it correctly. Um, and it like to do it, you look at like the maximum share repurchase and you, you put in, you know, let's say 500. Okay. So what that does is we're buying back stock and you want to do this if you believe that your, your company is going to perform well. The reason why is it'll help boost all the stock related factors um stock price roe and eps um because there's less outstanding shares so it's it's like a a good way to leverage um like in the real world certain investors will view that as a negative thing because it's like you're artificially boosting your your numbers but for the sake of the bsg it's uh it's good so don't worry about it um provided that you perform well so let's say like you repurchase all your stock and then and then your market it's just like investing if you bought like shares in a company and they perform terribly you know there goes those earnings so yeah same same logic there so like if you feel like you're doing good which hopefully you are repurchase some stock um so then let's say you know like how we have this negative cash balance you take out a loan uh i'm gonna do 50 because we want that buffer zone so let's say like if we did like 30 it'll say if projections aren't met accurately it might end up with a, like an overdraft loan so you don't want to do that you want enough buffer because the overdraft loans are at a higher percentage than these loans okay so generally five and ten years you don't really need to, to mess with the one year it's up to you and the last section here is early loan repayments so you can pay off loans early if you've got an excess of cash flow um i wouldn't worry too much about that like you don't like that's not necessary to win the bsg so um yeah it's more about if you leverage debt correctly so um hopefully that makes sense all right guys so i hope that helped you out a lot be sure to watch the other videos there's like one where i go through my thought process of an actual decision um i've linked them all in the description if you're still struggling be sure to send me an email. I'll, I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Um, but, you know, be sure to let me know some context about your situation. Um, and I'll appreciate that. That way I'm not like, oh, OK, tell me the problem. Uh, so, yeah, I hope this helps. Once again, leave that like, share, subscribe, do all that jazz. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one.